Welcome back to our uh, coverage of the National Day of Honor. And joining me now is Sergeant Cesar Iru, who is a former Afghan uh, soldier, Royal Regiment of Canada. And Alex Hurd is a project manager of the Memory Project and Historica Canada historian as well. Sergeant, great to have you here. Thank you very much for joining us. Tell us when you served in Afghanistan. I served in Afghanistan in 2010, uh, eight-month deployment between the months of April and November. Uh, so that was probably a year before the uh, combat component ended. So were you involved in combat? Yes, I was. And uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that experience? Well, it, my first experience with that occurred on June the 14th. Um, just to give you a little background, I was conducting force protection for logistic convoys, and we received uh, incoming enemy munitions, uh, RPGs, and machine gun fire. And then uh, you'd have to protect against that. How'd you do that? Did you, did you go out on patrol? Well, we would, in that certain incident, in that specific incident, we resorted to the training that we had received throughout the duration of our careers prior, and we acted accordingly with the standard operating procedures, and we carried on with the mission, ultimately. How big is your unit? Are we talking a unit of four or eight people, or are we talking a couple hundred? Well, the regiment that I belong to has one battalion, and it's a battalion of about 350 plus members, but it's a reserve army, primary, primary reserve unit. So it's not a regular force unit in the sense that it would not deploy um, altogether as a battalion. It would deploy, it augments regular force units with its reserve component members like myself. Mm. Okay, that's the combat component, and in part that's what we're uh, looking at, Alex, in terms of this uh, event. We're looking at the combat units and what, what role they did uh, overall. We're commemorating the accomplishments, I think, as much mm -hmm. as anything in Afghanistan. What's your sense of whether Can Canadians left Afghanistan a better place? Well, I think they've at least created the environment for um, a more stable Afghanistan, despite what any naysayers say. Um, our forces, our RCMP, um, our support personnel, uh, a variety of different um, civilian, um, you know, diplomats and so forth, were able to create, um, you know, help train their security forces, help develop uh, a better infrastructure, lay the basis for those things, and also goodwill on the part of the Afghan people. Yeah, and it's about time we recognized a, a lot yeah. of that. Have we not done that to good effect in the past? Well, I think. I would say yes or no. I mean, this is a different type of war. I mean, we look back on history and look at the Second World War. It was six years. It was a clear enemy versus a clear side that, you, you know, the clear allies. Um, this has been a different situation. This is a whole new type of warfare where you, someone on the street could be the enemy, and but dressed as a civilian. Um, and I think that sort of kind of creates sort of a, a murky ver sort of view of the war. And um, also it's been dragged out for over 13 years. Mm. So I think it, it's, I think that we, we've done our, our, our best at times, but I think with this National Day of Honor, we're certainly um, preparing for the future for day, uh, at least one day a year where people can reflect on, on what we've accomplished in Afghanistan. Yeah, Sergeant, well, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think it's about time we had a day of honor for this particular mission? Well, in short, yes, and I do feel honored as a member of the Canadian Forces and a veteran to have this day in, this, in these circumstances. It is, an, it is an honor. Did you lose friends? Yes. During this, uh, through the mission? Yes, yes I did. And how many would you have lost? Uh, uh, close to, friends that were? I would say colleagues, um, two, two colleagues of mine. Yeah, because the other component that we have to discuss, of course, is that there were 158 Canadian Armed Forces, uh, journalists and other people that were uh, killed in the war as well. We've seen this uh, wall of uh, valor, if you will, uh, being erected, and it's also making the rounds around the whole of the country, remembering uh, some of the people that were lost in this conflict. Um, do you think that uh, it's appropriate? In short, yes, I believe it's appropriate. Um I especially like how it's being transported between, I believe it's Trenton and Ottawa. Yeah. And I like that, how it gives the opportunity for people who are unable to go to the nation's capital to, to see the monument or see the vigil and, uh, and pay their respects and pay their honours to that. You're in the reserves though, or you were at the time, and then you got called up. Do you expect that it would be as violent as it ended up being? Well, my expectations of war were not unfounded, having already been immersed in a military environment with veterans who had already been there and experienced combat in varying degrees, not even in just Afghanistan, in Bosnia, for instance. Um, I was, not, I was not under no false 
you know, I had no misconceptions about what I was going to get myself into. And when I did find myself in violent situations, it is a shock, no matter how much you, you feel mentally and physically ready. But uh, I wasn't surprised by that happening, if that answers your question. But yeah. And, well, no, it does, absolutely. And now you find that your buddies that have come back, we're hearing about post-traumatic uh, stress disorder, uh, those kinds of things. One in four uh, Afghanistan veterans, apparently, have some kind of mental conditions that have come with that. I mean, was it that, was it that stressful that it pushed so many people over the brink? Well, you know what, Pat? A lot of the time, and I can't speak for everybody, but I can speak from personal experience, and that the stress is, this part of the stress is dealing with the, the stressful incidents that occur there, but reintegration with normal society when you return home is very challenging for many veterans, and it's, that's a factor as well that it's lar largely overseen simply because it doesn't revolve around that tra traumatic incident, but reintegration is a very stressful thing. But a day like today, I think, will uh, raise awareness at least that there are so many veterans that are having problems, don't you think? Absolutely. And awareness is a great thing. Is that, is that really one of the objectives of Historica, to raise awareness? Well, one of our objectives is to yeah, raise awareness about our, our country's, uh, all of our country's historical aspects. And as part of that, our country's military history and the experiences of soldiers, um, both in the past and today. And to get those stories out into the public um, and that creates more awareness and educates the Canadian public on a, on a larger scale. Mm. Uh, and do you get a lot of visitors? And will there be a lot of visitors that come to this particular um, uh, well, display that is going around? We, we uh, for lack of a better word, we recruit um, uh, men and women like himself to become part of our speakers bureau, our memory project speakers bureau, where they can go out to school groups and talk. And we have uh, about 1,500 volunteers across the country right now. We're always looking for more, and they can speak. Uh, you know, school, classrooms, community groups, share their stories, and um, and again, that will raise more awareness about the various issues that have to do with our, our country's military. You know, we should sign up Sergeant for doing yeah, that. Yeah, up for that, <laughs> Caesar? Well, I have been my fair share of speaking engagements with schools before, and it's something that I do enjoy. What is the messaging that you bring to the kids? Well, I like to touch on historical aspects, but I also like to touch on the human aspects of deployment and, and stress and camaraderie and Ultimately, I like to tell a nice story, but at the same time, I like to have a powerful message behind it. And a lot of the time, in my experience with students, they take a lot away from that, and they really do learn, which is nice. As it ever. Sergeant, thanks very much for sharing your experiences with us. Thank Appreciate you. it. Uh, Sergeant Cesar Iroo joining us, former Afghan uh, soldier uh, with the Royal Regiment of Canada. And Alex Hurd is the project manager of the Memory Project and Historica Canada as well.